Welcome everyone. I'm glad you could join us today. Um, we're going to talk with um, Philippe and Elizabeth. Philippe is from the Madeira Tourism Board and Elizabeth is from the Belmont Reeds Palace Hotel. Um, they're going to present to us about the wonderful, beautiful island of Madeira. So um, hopefully you can stay all the way to the end and then we can have questions and open it up. So thanks for being here and Philippe, I'll hand it over to you. Philippe, okay, I just un okay. unmuted you. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to introduce you this beautiful island, Madeira. Uh, my name is Philippe Fraga, as Darby told you, I work at Madeira Promotion Bureau. Uh, I'm the responsible for the US market, uh, among others. And today I'm going to introduce you to this Pearl of Atlantic. So I hope you enjoy this trip. Madeira, it's a new de European destination. Uh, I told it's new because uh, uh, Portugal is, is a little bit known uh, at the US, but Madeira Island, not so much. Uh, and here the sun shines all year round, allowing you to enjoy an extraordinary nature. It is a diversified and complete destination where the old family meets answers, whether in culture, history or tradition. Uh, if you are looking for sports in land or at sea, it is also a complete uh, place to come or even to walk around in our old and modern cities. Uh, okay. Uh, Madeira was elected the safest destination uh, to travel in 2021 in Europe, uh, according to a list released by the European Best Destinations. Uh, so since the beginning of the pandemic, Madeira has been one of the safest destinations here in Europe. Uh, our international airport uh, reopened uh, in last July, uh, July 2020, uh, with some procedures uh, installed by the local government to protect the inhabitants and tourists that are coming to Madeira. Uh, and so Madeira uh, has maintained one of the lowest rates of active cases uh, here in Europe. So right now the procedures are, um, we, we, we recommend to do a test, uh, a COVID PCR test uh, within 72 hours prior to departure, but the passengers that, want, that don't want to do can do a test upon the arrival. It is a free test. Uh, the government is paying these tests um, and so with these uh, procedures, Madeira has been recognized by one of the uh, safest destinations to visit in Europe during this year. Where are we? Uh, Madeira is an archipelago uh, composed by four islands. Two of them are uh, with habitants, two of them are inhabitants. Uh, so we are in the middle of the European and African continent. Um, if you are traveling from the US to uh, Europe, the average flight time from the East Coast, uh, it's around eight hours. And once you are in Portugal, uh, it's very easy to, to, to arrive to Madeira. Uh, we are only a one hour and 30 minutes flight away from Lisbon or Oporto with a lot of daily flights from Portugal mainland. Uh, but it's important to refer that uh, you can easily get to Madeira uh, once you are in Europe. So uh, you don't have to be in Portugal mainland to come to Madeira. We have direct flights uh, from several cities, several capitals in Europe, uh, like Paris, London, uh, Madrid during summertime, uh, several cities in Germany, uh, the Nordic countries. So uh, once you are in Europe, it's very, very easy to, to reach to, to, to Madeira. 
Top Portugal has a program. I don't know if you are familiar with this program, the Stopover program, uh, that uh, if you book Madeira as a final destination, uh, you can do a, um, a stop up to five nights uh, in Lisbon or Oporto, and you won't pay uh, the second flight to Madeira. So it's only it's always a good way to know two different regions of Portugal for the price of one uh, one flight. We may say, um, Madeira. It's an all year round destination. Uh, we have a very mild weather here. Uh, for example, uh, when I'm in, in Madeira working at my office, uh, that it's not far away from from the beach, uh, you will see that Funchal it's a very charming city uh, surrounded by the sea. Uh, and in my lunchtime, for example, I can take a dip in the ocean from January to January, because as you can see, the minimum temperatures uh, during the winter time, it's around 70, uh, 72 Fahrenheit degrees, uh, the sea and air temperature. And during the summer season, the maximum temperature, it's around 77 Fahrenheit degrees. So we have a very mild weather. It's, it's never too cold, never too hot. Uh, here uh, in Madeira, and we do have a subtropical uh, weather. So Funchal, Funchal, it's the, the capital. Uh, it's, a, as I said, a charming and cosmopolitan city with offers for all tastes. Uh, we, the Madeiran people, are known for the hospitality, um, and you will always find uh, people, uh, whether in the hotels, restaurants, the, the touristic companies, that can speak English and uh, like to receive uh, strangers and like to, to, to be in touch with the, the foreigners that are visiting uh, our island. In Funchal, you can find the, the old town. It is the historical center and the creative hub of the city. Uh, here, uh, the creativity can be found year round. You can find a number of restaurants uh, and a lots of uh, nightlife uh, to, to let you experience and feel this part of the city in a different way. And as I told you, for example, you can see in the feast, at the first picture, um, it's uh, a beach uh, in the city center. So uh, you, wherever, because of course, <laughs> we live in, on an island, so we are always surrounded by sea. Uh, this is not... A, a golden sand island uh, that I will show you further, but you can easily take a dip in the ocean, even if you are at the city center. Um, also in the old town, uh, we have a street with the painted doors. Uh, this is a project that was an invitation to the local artists to upgrade doors, converting the streets into a, a, an orthodox outdoor art gallery. So as I told you, uh, the old city town is like the creative hub uh, of the city. Nearby, you can find our farmer's market. Um, is where you can find all, all the, the, the local and tropical fruits, flowers, vegetables, uh, and even fish from Madeira. It is uh, uh, an explosion of colors, flavors, uh, it's a must-go place when, when you are in Funchal. Of course, the toboggans, it's one of the main attractions here uh, at the city. It's a unique experience that you can only live in Madeira uh, and you, where you will slide from the top of the mountain, mountain almost to the city center in a basket car. Uh, these bas basket cars were used to uh, transport food uh, back uh, more than a hundred uh, years uh, ago, and nowadays uh, it's like uh, to re one of the main attractions here in, in Madeira. We are surrounded by gardens. Madeira is also known uh, for the variety of its gardens and parks, carefully cared and appreciated by locals as well as visitors. So our subtropical climate allows the survival of a wide variety of flowers, plants and trees from all over the world. The outdoor events, uh, if you came during the summer season, you can easily find concerts and outdoor events 
where you can enjoy good uh, music and uh, local and international music uh, and have a drink with uh, your family, with your friends. It's always a, a good season to come to Madeira during the summertime. Our accommodation. So Madeira offers a wide range of high quality accommodations. Actually, 80% of the hotels are four and five stars here in Madeira. Um, you can find from refined traditional villas uh, uh, to five-star resorts uh, hotel with access to the ocean, uh, even to modern design boutique hotels in the city center, as well as historical uh, hotels uh, that Elizabeth will show you further. Uh, it's the first picture here. It's the, it's the balcony of uh, uh, the Belmont Ridge Hotel. Uh, uh, that is dated to 1891. I guess it was the first uh, hotel being uh, constructed in Portugal, in Madeira for sure, but I guess in Portugal also. And just a curiosity, uh, Sir Winston Churchill, uh, back in the 50s, used to come to Madeira uh, to pass uh, his, his holidays, his vacations, uh, and he stayed at Belmont Ritz, and today... Uh, the, the hotel did a tribute to, to Churchill and they have a, a sweet room with his name. Uh, our gastronomy, it's, it's impossible to think about Portugal without thinking about our food uh, uh, and drinks, of course. Here you will find typical food from our local bread named Bolo do Caco, uh, our fresh fish and seafood, uh, the most typical meat dish is called espetada, that is some cubes of meat stuffed in a laurel stick. Uh, our traditional drinks named ponche with the local uh, rum uh, and local fruits. Um, but even top cuisine. So we have here uh, restaurants with international Michelin star chefs. Uh, and for example, uh, one, of, one of the restaurants uh, is at the Belmont Ritz Otto. Uh, so here you can find from typical food, uh, even to international cuisine, uh, easily, uh, so you don't have only to taste our typical food. Um, the Madeira wine, of course, the worldwide famous Madeira wine. Uh, I, I will tell you another curiosity, I don't know if you know about this, but the celebration of the independence of the United States on July the 4th, uh, 1776, was celebrated with a toast of Madeira wine. Uh, so it's many people in the US knows, but it's only a good curiosity to, to tell you. Uh, so this is a, a, a centenary wine, a worldwide famous wine. Uh, and here you can visit the farms in the North Coast and see uh, how they produce the wine, even have lunch at the farm with food and wine tasting. And also you can visit the wine lodges in the city center where you can fill and taste these centenary wines and uh, buy uh, some different bottles. Uh, imagine buy a bottle uh, with your age. Uh, it's, you, can, you can easily find. Regarding the nature, two thirds of Madeira uh, is composed by the local forest uh, that is World Natural Heritage by UNESCO. So, which means that is protected area. Here, uh, you can easily find stunning and beautiful landscapes, uh, as well as gardens and parks that I already present you. Uh, and our forest is about 20 million years old, uh, mainly uh, made of trees, and many of which are centen sentinel. Uh, but be aware that uh, you can easily walk around without any danger. Uh, there isn't uh, um, wild animals uh, in, in, in our, our forest. The Madeira Island is even more beautiful when we see it from above. Uh, it is an island with a marked topography. So in a moment, you are at the city center and 30 minutes later, you can be above the clouds. Uh, and it's so easy to get there by car. Please don't think that you have to walk uh, with, in dangerous uh, paths or trails. You can easily get by car. So imagine watching the sunrise uh, at, at uh, the, one of the highest peaks in Madeira with uh, well, almost 1,900 meters uh, of altitude. 
uh, this is a unique experience um, that uh, Belmont Reads have a service that Elizabeth will present you further as well. Uh, it's a breakfast above, above the clouds. Uh, our main attractions are the trekkings. We call it Levadas. Um, so at the, at the mountains, there are over 2,000 kilometers of water channels uh, with uh, 33 recommended uh, walks uh, where you can walk around into the mountains and be in touch uh, with uh, an untouched and raw nature. Um, for those without the time or energy to see the islands more in necessarily areas by, for example, walking or mountain bike, uh, the best alternative uh, is to do a jeep tour. In each twist and turn, turn the discoveries are intense uh, and explore. you can explore the most remote corners of this island of huge contrasts. For the golf, golf uh, lovers, we have three golf courses, uh, two in Madeira Island, one in Porto Santo, that is our neighbor island that I will talk about in a few mi minutes, uh, regarding the sea activities and landscapes. Uh, here you will find beautiful and unique coastlines, uh, and we have uh, four marine uh, reserves. Uh, but please don't forget that Madeira is a volcanic island, like I told you in the beginning of the presentation. So we don't have like golden sand beaches, but we do have rocky beaches. We are famous for our natural volcanic pools uh, that you can see in, at the first picture um, and pebble beaches. Pebble, it's like a, a small volcanic stone, uh, but you will always be surrounded by the mountains uh, whenever you, you are uh, at, at the beach. Uh, it's always a nice program when you are here in Madeira to go offshore uh, and sailing and explore uh, other beaches that you can only get by boat. Um, so there are private yachts to rent as well as ex excursion trips, uh, but we always advise to go in a private charter. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean is the home of a very rich sea fauna, so we have a lot of whales and dolphins swimming all year round that we call our residence, uh, that you can easily watch when you go offshore. For the, the, the diving lovers, uh, to dive in Madeira, to discover a special underwater love. And for the younger people, uh, for the most radical people, Madeira is considered the surfer's paradise in Europe. The best spots are in the north shore, uh, shore of the island. Porto Santo, it's our uh, neighbor island. It's the second island uh, that are uh, with habitants. And it's a, such a small island, so much to live. Uh, Porto Santo, it's simply a small golden sand uh, with nine kilometer beach. Um, it is the perfect spot to re relax. You can go by plane whenever you are in, in Madeira. It's only a 15-minute flight, uh, or you can go by ferry boat. It's around two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, being in Porto Santo, it's swimming in a warm, transparent uh, waters and touching this fine golden sand and being overtaken by a sense of well-being. Uh, but it's important to know that the climate of Porto Santo, it's more dry than uh, uh, in Madeira. It's a little bit different. It's a golden island, while Madeira it's a green island. Uh, as I told you, you can go on a one-day cruise uh, from Funchal, but you can stay there and discover one of the most best secrets of the Atlantic Ocean, that is this island. Uh, there are some hotels in Porto Santo, even all-inclusive with access to the beach, and you can find uh, good restaurants as well and uh, some activities like jeep tours, diving, golf, as I told you, uh, but is indeed one of the best places to turn off and uh, relax uh, a little bit. Our, our events. Two slides. So Madeira has a rich calendar of festive events during the year. Um, we have parties uh, almost uh, from January to January, the Christmas and New Year's Eve festivities during December and January. Uh, actually, we are famous by the fireworks shows on the New Year's Eve, 
uh, we were officially registered in the Guinness World Book Records as the world's greatest show back in 2006. Uh, it's one of the highest season here in Madeira uh, during the, the month of December. The carnival party during February, uh, during March, April, we have the flower festival. It's the celebration of spring, the Atlantic Fe festival during June. Uh, every, every single Saturday night, there is a firework show at the City Bay, the Columbus Festival, the Madeira Wine Festival during December and October, where you can live the experience of stepping and picking grapes, for example. Uh, and it's a, a good season to come to Madeira during this uh, September, October, because it's uh, right after the summer uh, and it's not the high season, but uh, it's still good weather out there. Uh, and you have, for example, the Madeira Wine Festival. I just wanted to show you a brief video to finish my presentation. So, Philippe, when that video is done, can you explain that picture with the, um, the yeah. elevator coming down by the beach? Yes, I can explain, but I, <laughs> I think the video is not working. I can send after after the presentation. I can send you uh, the video. It's better. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, no, thank you, you have here My contact if you need anything from Madeira. Um, I'll send you the, the video right after. And sorry, Darby, do you want me to explain the elevator? Yes. Yeah. You want to show that picture again and show where the beach is and what that property is. This is one of. I guess it's here. It's the next one, right? Yeah. So, yeah, this is a, an elevator, uh, and this beach is called Fajan dos Padres. Uh, you can go by land, of course. You have to go down in the elevator, or you can go by, uh, by sea. You have to, to rent a boat. Uh, down in Fajan dos Padres, you can find tropical fruit as well as Madeira wine. Um, it is a small, uh, it's one of the smallest uh, wine lodges uh, here in Madeira, uh, but uh, they, they have wine that uh, were produced there. It's like a sub, how can I say, it's like a subtropical uh, climate down there, of course, because mm -hmm. it's, it's nearby the sea. Uh, and, and it's a unique place. So there is a good restaurant where you can have lunch with good fresh fish, for example, and it's one of the must-go places here in Madeira, and it's only 15 minutes away from the city center. Great, thank you. Thanks, Philip. that was great. Thank and you now, very much. Um, Elizabeth's gonna talk. I'm just gonna make sure that you can unmute you. Okay, so I'm unmuted, right? Yes. Great. <laughs> Hello. Uh, good evening to all. Buon noite. My name is Elisabetta Gama. And uh, today I would like to introduce to you uh, the hotel that, as Philippe said and very well, we are the oldest hotel, the first hotel built in Madeira and in Portugal. I will not be telling you here uh, like uh, how many rooms we have, how many restaurants we have and all those things, because this is not what is important. What is important is to show you what is iconic and all the history that is behind our walls. OK, uh, first, let me introduce you myself. My name, uh, as I told you, I'm, I'm Elizabeth de Gama. I was born in Madeira. Maybe I'm your cousin of a few of you, as I was telling you at the beginning. Uh, I have lots of family living in Boston. Um, this is, I've been traveling everywhere. I'm in the tourism business for seven, 16 years, 17, 16 years, yes. And wherever I travel, wherever I go, I always say Madeira is the place to live, is the place to raise your children. So I was living in Lisbon, I was traveling a lot, and then I just packed my things and moved back to my island and to live in the safe and the very, very 
mild weather plagues. Before uh, telling you all the histories that we have behind our walls, as I'll tell you, I would like just to put a little bit what Belmont on the map and tell you what Belmont is. I'm, I'm not sure if you are all familiar with, uh, with our brand. We are a group of hotels, of luxury hotels. We have 47 properties all around the world in 22 countries. Maybe Belmont doesn't ring a bell, but then if I tell you some of the hotels, like for example, Cipriani in Venice, or even the United States, we have El Encanto in Santa Barbara or Charleston Place, or the very well-known Copacabana Palace in Rio de Janeiro. These are just of the hotels we have, together with, for example, the trains, the Venice Simplin Orient Express from the Agatha Christie, the very well-known from, from the book of Agatha Christie. That train is also belongs to Belmont. Uh, and we also have safaris uh, in the Botswana. So it's a big, big collection uh, of hotels. The only hotel that we have in Portugal is Ritz Palace. And we belong to the group of Louis Vuitton. So we are one of the maisons of, uh, of Louis Vuitton. All the Belmont uh, family belongs to Louis Vuitton. Uh, Introducing the hotel, introducing Ritz Palace, we exist for 130 years. We were built in 1891, as Philippe was saying, and very well. And all this started with a Scottish gentleman called Reeds, William Reed. That's why we are Reeds Palace, because we are his dream. He, he was living in Scotland. He was 14 years old. He was very poor. And, and he was with disease of the chest. So the family, well, better, the doctor said to his family that he needed to move to a warmer place to survive. This is actually one of the ways that the tourism in Madeira began was because we were seen as a healthy, uh, healthy destination because of our mild weather. So many people from the north part of Europe was coming to Madeira to heal themselves. And this is one of the cases. The, the doctor said to the family, look, if you want your kid to survive, you need to put him and send him over to a warmer place. So they put five pounds in his pocket and send him over to Madeira. When he arrived here, well, he looked around and said, what I'm going to do now? And he just basically started working on a German bakery. And then he moved to the wine industry because this is where he made all his wealth. He started exporting the Madeira wine. He built a big, uh, big amount of money, let's put it this way. And then he looked around, he was seeing the cruise lines passing by between Europe and America. And he said, look, I need, maybe I need to build up an hotel where all the services there, the butlers, the restaurants, the maids. So he bought this land that you can see here in the picture that is really in Funchal city. You can walk everywhere. It's really by the port of Funchal. And he bought and he built on the time what he called the new hotel. He, unfortunately, he didn't open the doors of the hotel in 1891 because he died two years before. And it was his two sons, Alfred and William, who did. But then there's his sons, they were not very good in business as the father. So they needed to, they ended up uh, selling the hotel to Blandy's family that owns all the Madeira wines. It's, it's a British family living in an island. And later on, British family in 96 sold to the company by that name as Orient Express. And then it was sold in 19, 2019, no, sorry, 2017, it was sold to Louis Vuitton. Uh, this is because uh, all the group, it was owned by Mr. James Sherwood. He was the one who built the, the Belmont collection, the 47 properties, because some people collect stamps. Mr. James Sherwood collects hotels. Uh, this is, was one of them. And there was a time that now in 2017, he was already 80 plus and he felt very tired. So he decided to sell all the group to, to the Louis Vuitton Maison. So here, uh, Ritz Palace, since it's opened 130 years ago, has been welcoming all the rich and famous. Just to give you an, an idea, we received the Empress Sisi back um, many centuries ago, I mean, 100 years ago. Uh, she, after the death of her son, she came here to relax and to forget a little bit about all the sadness he was having at that moment. 
as Philippe said, and very well, Mr. Winston Churchill was also staying with us. And the fourth volume of his war memories were, was written here as well. He came to recover after the few strokes that he had during the Second World War. It was very tough for him. So he came here to recover and he stayed uh, with us. After that, we had, for example, Batista from Cuba. After Fidel, Fidel Castro took the power, uh, he was exiled here with his family on the third floor of Reed's Palace during three years. He lived here with us. And then we had other people, for example, Roger Moore, Gregory Peck, Sir Peter O'Toole. So all these people have been coming since the very beginning to enjoy here some relaxation and some days. We still have um, a lot of aristocracy and celebrities coming to visit us, as like in old Belmont, but of course, our privacy and our we try to keep the privacy as much as possible. We are open all year round because it's it's a really nice destination. And here, the clients, when you are here, you can enjoy this oasis, these gardens that are even being in the city. You always feel that you are not in the city because you are really close in this garden, three acres of gardens, and in this oasis. You can enjoy here the swimming pools that are heated all year round. The rooms, they are all to the seaside. So you will never have the views to the mountains or to, or to the street. It's always to the seaside. You can swim directly in the ocean because you don't have direct access. And actually this swimming pool that you see here down uh, by the ocean, this used to be our reception when the hotel opened. So there were no cars, there were no planes. Everyone was arriving by boat. And then they used to come from the cruise lines, the small boats, and then they arrived here at this where the swimming pool is. It used to be our reception. And our general manager was there welcoming the guests. And then my colleagues were bringing the guests up with the hammocks uh, because it was a traditional transportation of, of Madeira. So that was a hard life because they had to walk up all these stairs up to the hotel, carrying the guests on hammocks besides those huge luggage that they used to have in the old times. So my colleagues didn't have an easy life back then. Just to give you a glimpse of what your hotel is, it's historical, as I told you, every wall has an history behind, but of course we try to keep updated. We do refurbishment if, almost every year. This is the lobby when you enter it. all the rooms with the balconies overlooking the gardens, overlooking the ocean. It's like it's like a slowdown. What you want, what we want to give you is like a slowdown. At the moment that you enter here, you forget the stress of your life and you just relax and you enjoy the views, you enjoy the gardens, the light colors of the rooms. All rooms are unique. They're all different. There's not a room that is the same as the other one because they were built in 1891. So they all have different touches. We have many restaurants. And as again, as Philippe said, we have a Michelin star restaurant and also 80% of our food is from Madeira. We do have a commitment and we have farmers working just for us. And we have a commitment of developing of the economy of Madeira. So we have lots of farmers and lots of companies that provide us the food and the services that we need. And 80% of the food, they are grown here. They are very tasty. They are really nice. There are plenty of options to be around. This is where you can enjoy your breakfast every morning, starting your morning very slowly by the pools. This is our Italian restaurant that you can, it has a wonderful view over the hotel and over the bay. It has this magical terrace that on a night of a full moon, it's really romantic and really very special. And also the afternoon tea. This, this is really iconic. This is like, we've been serving tea for 130 years. Uh, I think this gives us a little bit of experience and 80% uh, and of the people that come here to enjoy the tea, they are not even staying with us. They are on cruise ships, there are other hotels, and they come just to have this experience that is seen as very British, but actually it was the Portuguese queen, Caterina, that took the tea to England and then started the tradition there. So the tea is ours, it's not British, it's ours, but well, <laughs> they have really made it very, very, very big thing. But uh, it was us after the India route that we took the, the tea to to England and we still keep this tradition and it's a very very we serve tea every single day of the year two seatings and you always need to book at least one week in advance to have a 
it's a table over here. Then there's lots of places that you can enjoy, the swimming pools that I told you that are heated all year round, the gardens, as you can see, this is a beautiful scene that you can see from the hotel, the spa, all around. We have lots of facilities for children. You have kids clubs for them. We have even our soft toy, our body that we call Zarko, that we offer to the children when they are arriving. They do their private chicken. We have little steps, they, they come in, they go to the counter, they sign. So there's everything built around them. So it's a, it's a very nice place for families, for since from the grandparents to the grandchildren to daughters to everybody. It's a really nice because you have something for everybody. Let's say this way, and then also Belmont. It's it's seen as a celebrations uh, hotels. We receive many many people coming to celebrate their wedding anniversary, their birthday, their even their wedding. So we do have a lot of this kind of events that people come to celebrate something that is very special in their lives. This is, and I like to show this picture because this is our ballroom that is original from 1891. The chandeliers are original, this floor, the ceiling, everything is original. And when you walk here, it seems like you are walking back on time. This is the place where many, many meetings during the Second World War took place because all Europe was in the middle of the war and Madero was not. So many politicians were meeting here. Uh, and we do say, and we do believe that many decisions on this world war was uh, taking place over here. And then these experiences, uh, Philippe already told many things about Madeira Island. I don't need to tell you that again or nothing especially about Madeira Island but what we do and we do have in Belmont and Reed's Palace is that we do have the activities but we always give a touch we like to give the experience it's not just going there but it's putting a little bit of us in there so as he was saying that is the sunrise above the clouds which is anyone can take a four by four or just drive its own his own car and go up to the mountains and see the sunrise which is beautiful but then uh, what we do have for the guests that are staying with us, for all of you that stays with us, is that we serve the breakfast up in the mountains. My colleagues go there, they prepare a full breakfast, a champagne breakfast, and you are alone by yourselves in the middle of the mountains, enjoying this peace, hearing the birds and enjoying the breakfast. The other one that we do is on that same place that you see that you saw the elevator that Felipe was showing, that is Fajan dos Padres. So we also take our guests there. This is this is very uh, fertile soil, as Philippe was saying. The bananas are growing there, the papayas, the mangoes. So everything is growing there. It's very biological. So we take our guests there. And what we do is that we take you to the owner's house uh, and you can taste the, the Madeira wine that Thomas Jefferson was very passionate about and celebrated the declaration of independence of the United States with it. And George Washington did it did as well. And still today, some of the official events at the White House is still with Madeira wine because it's it's the, it's a typical. So there's a big bond here, as you see. So you can come here and you can meet the owners. You can see how the Madeira wine is produced. You can taste it, the different types of Madeira wines, and then you can enjoy the lunch on the very nice restaurant that is there with the low, with the very fresh fish and the local vegetables and the local fruit that are there. Other experience that we do, and all these experiences that I'm telling you here, you can book through Darby. Darby has all this with her. So you just can basically book with her. So this is Voyage to Desertes that we, we take, uh, we pick, we private a, a yacht. So we do a privatization of the yacht. We take you to Desertes Islands, that the, they are the uninhabited islands in front of, of Madeira Island. You, you have there the last living colony of monks lions. If you are lucky, they will be at home and you will be able to see them. If you're not, well, it's a nice trip anyway. Uh, and you spend there the day and we do serve lunch on board. Again, my colleagues are there uh, and they will take a very fresh and very nice meal, very nice lunch that you can enjoy on board and spend the day um, on the board of this yacht and, and dive and swim in desert islands because you need a special permit to go there. And some companies do have, some others not. So you always need a special permit to go because this is protected. And then 
we are uh, Latins, we just want excuses to have parties. As, as Philippe was saying, there's lots of events going on around the, uh, around, in the island around the year. And we always like also to join this, this events. For example, the Flower Festival that happens normally in May. And we do believe that this year will happen again in May. Uh, we also do like flower workshops. We, this year we'll be having Simon Lessitz, which is a very well-known uh, botanist from United Kingdom that will come to give uh, flowers workshops for our guests, for example. We do have the Art of Flavors. This is a festival that we do every June. It will happen again this June. That's our Michelin star chef. Our Michelin star chef is the only Madeiran chef with this Michelin star. It's here on the picture on the app. Um, it's called Wish Pestane. And he invites seven to seven to eight, seven or eight other fellows, uh, all Michelin stars to come and prepare a festival for the food. This is very nice. You can taste Michelin star food from all around the world in one day here at our hotel. Wellness weekends we all do. And just to finalize, as Philippe was saying, one of the biggest fireworks display in the world, the one that we're on the Guinness Book in 2006. It's amazing. It's unforgettable. It's one of those, those seasons, I always say, at least once in your lifetime, you should come. Uh, when I'm at the hotel with the guests, that everybody's crying, hugging each other, saying how much they love, uh, all of them. So it's, it's a really emotional, it's really beautiful. It's 46 points of fireworks all around. And it's something that is really worthwhile at least once in your lifetime. And with this, I, I, I say goodbye. Um, and any questions you have, I hope you enjoyed the tour and the trip over Madeira and over Reed's Palace as well. And any question you have, we are on, on the side of, of the world, but very, very close. Great, thank you, Elizabeth. Let me stop sharing. You're welcome.